Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's Adobe Muse quick start video. Today we are going to create the project for our first website and go over the first settings that will define our website and the way that it will behave. So head over to the file menu in the top left hand corner and press new website or just hit the new button directly from the intro screen. From here you have a few options, the first of which is fluid width and fixed width. Fixed width will give you a static website which will not change in size regardless of device, scale or screen resolution and stay the same way it was designed. Whereas fluid width will begin to make things move and scale responsively with the browser window. That way you can target all kinds of different devices. Throughout the series we'll be working with fluid width so we can create dynamic and responsive websites. To the right of this we have our max page width. This is essentially the widest your website will be able to stretch and expand to before it stops. If you look at most websites you'll notice there's a margin down the sides to keep things tidy and stop content going all the way out to the edges. This max width option is essentially our way of defining the maximum width our website can take up. Throughout this series we'll be creating a website targeted at desktop PCs, most of which have a width of at least 1000 pixels. Taking into consideration my personal desktop is 1920 wide by 1080, I think 1000 should be more than enough. Next up you have columns, a brilliant way to lay out your website and break down the different sections. For example, you could put some text in one column and an image in the column next to it. We'll go over these in a little bit more detail later on but it's definitely a good idea to have more for a desktop, maybe around 8 or 12 and if you're working with something smaller like a tablet, about 6 to 8. Going into the advanced settings below that, we've got a few more bits we can play around with. Starting with minimum width, this is essentially the minimum width the screen will be before it stops moving and instead will appear to be cropped. If you take a look at YouTube in my browser, you'll see it begins to just crop off part of the website once it gets below a certain width. You can use this to stop elements of your websites becoming so small you can no longer see them or become unusable. Next up you have minimum height, probably one of the least important settings in here. This is essentially the minimum height the page will display. Keep in mind your website will always grow to accommodate content you have on your page. Having said that, when you start adding images, text etc, your browser will accommodate for that accordingly and even add a scroll bar if you need to. We'll leave this for now as it is and get We'll leave this how it is and it'll give me more room to work because there'll be plenty of content and it won't really affect our website. Lastly, you have your margins and padding. It works in the same way as it would any other application. Margins are the margins inside the page and padding is, the, is a way of giving yourself extra space outside the page. When you use your browser fill, you'll see the effect for yourself. We're not going to use any padding or margin throughout this series, so we'll just set those both down to zero for now. Lastly, we have your resolution. If you choose standard, it will use the standard resolution image to everyone that visits your website and include those with high resolution screens. However, to accommodate people with high deck pixel density screens, you can choose the high DPI option, which will serve high resolution and high pixel density images. Keep in mind though, as the pop-up is about to say, it will significantly increase loading time and data downloaded, which isn't great for people on a cellular connection or have limited data. Cool, so our first website is set up. Hopefully you have a better understanding of some of the settings and all we need to do now is just add the content. In the next video we'll start planning the pages and bringing them together in the planning view. And as always, don't forget to share the video, share the love, smack that like button and keep on creating.